Today is January the 6th, 2019. My workbench is in uh, shambles here, but I'm just going to show you what I've got <clears throat> that I think you might find interesting. I said I was going to start documenting the performance of some of these uh, UTC transformers. Well, here's that second uh, UTC LS61 that I have. Here's the other one. I think this is a 61, doesn't really matter. That's a 57 anyway. There's a pair of 57s and a 61. I guess that's a 61. So I got two of these, two of these. Okay, well, here's a. Looks pretty original to me. Got a slight bit of damage. It looks like it's been dropped on the counter over there, but power supply and the power transformer is a little crooked. But I don't think it hurt it. Uh, I was playing with this a couple of days ago. Uh, my grandson and I just came back from an adventure in the wilderness of New Mexico photographing the stars. I'll try to show you a picture, uh, one of the pictures here at the end of the video. But when I left this it was working great. I did a uh, bunch of scans of it over here. I think that's its performance right there. At about 8 watts if I remember correctly. I, I can't remember for sure. It's been a couple of days ago but, but it's really darn good. You can see it's down at about 0.3 percent at, at uh, 20 hertz down here on the left hand side. And at 20 kilohertz, it's uh, still only 0.5%. So it does really well. They're not high power, that's for sure. But I just came back in and turned it back on. Everything's sort of cold in here. It's kind of cold and rainy here, and I'm going to plug in the rectifier. That's the way I shut off the high voltage sometimes. And I have a solid state one right here. I hear that I put in there to raise the plate voltage a little bit. But let's put in the 5U4. It'll warm up very quickly. And let me show you what, what it's doing right now. See those two meters right there, I hope you can see them. See how they're oscillating? One goes up, the other one goes down. What that is, is I'm monitoring... Uh, this amplifier is built right, right to the schematic. What I'm doing is I'm monitoring the uh, cathode current through this tube with one meter and the cathode current through the other one with the other meter. Use a little stereo jack in there so that you can, you know, when you plug it in you run the current through the meter. And you use this uh, pot right here to adjust the overall uh, current to about 110 milliamps. And then you use this one right here to balance it to 55 milliamps per tube. That is per the instructions. Here is the schematic to it. I hope you can get a really good picture of that. See, there's the one that you use to set the current to like 110 milliamps. This is the one you use to uh, balance them to 55 each. And that works. And you insert your uh, one meter right there and uh, one meter right there. This is a UTC W10 10 watt Williamson amplifier. Uses a pair of uh, seven N sevens, which is the same thing as a six S N seven, but these are the Loctal bases, and there's all of the component values over there. Well, anyway, the point is, I've always found it a challenge to get the um, the feedback exactly right so I'm using this uh, pot right here to adjust it and uh, I've got that that is an indication of too much feedback right there it's oscillating very slow like at about one Hertz or so you can actually see it again over here on the oscilloscope you can see that that's not good <laughs> obviously now the way that we can solve that is I'm going to increase slightly. I've got a little bit too much feedback. As I turn this clockwise, I'm increasing the resistance because this thing is, uh, you know, the pot's turning this way. I'm increasing the resistance and I'm decreasing the feedback, so I'm going to increase it until it stops. Well, I can get it to turn without sliding the pot. This is more difficult than I thought. Because the, uh, there it goes. There we go. It kind of settled down right there. There you go. Okay. See, there's our uh, there's our cathode current at about 54 milliamps. This one is at uh, 54 milliamps. The scales are different. This is a zero to 100 milliamp. This is a 120 milliamps. So you have to read them slightly different. Yeah, that's 54 and that's 54. So if you add that up, that's 108. That's close to 110 as I can get, and it. Everything works, okay? Original, uh, rig an original 5U4. So let's see how it performs. I guess I'm showing that about the negative feedback because uh, a lot of these resistors that they put in there, they suggest that the feedback resistor be 120 times the square root of the uh, 
impedance tap. And if you do that, you will find out you've got a very low value and you've got a lot of feedback. And you will end up with those kinds of uh, instabilities that I just showed you. But you can see how stable they are right now. Hope the camera's not washed out. Yeah, you can see how stable they are. And you can see that the, that the line is stable. Okay, let's plug in some signal to it. There we go. Okay, we're overdriving it grossly. Let's turn that down. And we'll turn the power up to maybe about, well, let's turn it up to 10 watts. That's what it's rated at. And there's the sine wave. This is at 2 kilohertz. I use 2 kilohertz, so that allows me to quickly go from um, here on my oscillator from 2 kilohertz to 200 to 20, and then back up to 20K. If I put it on one, then I'm always, you know, one kilohertz, I'm always twisting this thing. So anyway, that's at two kilohertz, 10 watts, beautiful sine wave, and uh, about 0.3% distortion. Pretty good, huh? Okay, let's try it at uh, 20 kilohertz. Less than 1% at 10 watts. Uh, let's try it at 200 hertz. There's our 200 hertz, 0.3%, 10 watts. All right, here's the here's the deal breaker. Can it do it at 20 hertz? There's 20 hertz. Let's look at our. Look, there's a little bit of oscillation on there. You can see there's some instability in there too. Probably, yeah. See that fuzz on it right there? That's still a little bit too much feedback. If I reduce it a little bit more, I can actually get rid of that. However, if I reduce it a little bit more, then it'll start distorting right quick. It, it's, it's easily overdriven. Actually, I see a little bit of an anomaly right down there. Hope you can, can see this. I think you probably can. You can usually see it better in the uh, video than I can on the screen of the, uh, the camera. So that is, that is what it looks like at 20 hertz at 10 watts about five percent now if we do change that to 30 Hertz right there now we're at 30 gets better doesn't it and our THD gets much better too so anyway all I'm doing right here is a very quick and dirty so to speak um, UTC Williamson W10 this is this is an original W10 I mean, you could tell it's been around for a few years. See, look at the condition of the wires, you know, the separate power supply. Goes over and powers it. It's actually quite beautiful in its own way. I mean, according to, to today's standards, grossly overbuilt, you might say. So here's a power plug. I'm always a little cautious about separate power supplies because if this chassis isn't electrically connected to this chassis very securely and you get between them then you can be the return path and it can knock the hell out of you or worse so be very very careful when you uh, use separate power supplies uh, if I was going to use this I would add another I would probably on the back side of it I'd probably put a screw and on the same thing on this one and put a piece of braid between them you do not want these two guys right here to become separated electrically because if you get between them and you're going to remember it but anyway it works great okay let's back to this schematic this is the schematic i'll show it once more you can get all this stuff online now here are my favorite schematics right here i like these heat kits these things right here just perform beautifully this is for all practical purposes the same circuit except they don't use this um circuit over here to adjust to a maximum current. They just eliminated that and put in a fixed resistor. But everything else is the same. That is a dandy circuit. That is just amplifier right here. I'll have to show you that on the next video so this one won't be too long. And here's a little bit more modern Heathkit one. Exactly the same circuit again. Except they use uh, 12AU7s. And they change a couple of component values. Only about that one right there. The rest of the component values are pretty much the same. This one right here, they also put this little bit of a snubber right here. A high frequency snubber across it. And that will stabilize it. 
these these two, these amplifiers out here have a little bit of instability at high frequencies, and this right here, this little uh, snubber circuit right here, will stop the uh, high frequency oscillations that are that are present, and you will see with an oscilloscope. But it also lowers the um, it also increases rather the THD up at 20 kilohertz from maybe 0.8 percent without it to maybe like two and a half percent with it. Yeah, this does kind of a number on your 20 kilohertz if that really matters. But anyway, these these are what I build to all the time, and and 99 percent of the time I build to this one. I love this circuit. Can't beat it. This is a uh, Heathkit Williamson type amplifier model W3M. The more modern version is a W5M. So anyway, I like to document this stuff as it comes through my shop because I'll probably never be able to, I'll probably never see another one again and I hope you guys enjoy it. So there's the uh, the mighty UTC W10 and it does a good job at 10 watts. Thanks for watching.